Order! 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 You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Let's turn to, to the front page of The Guardian and a story which over the months, in fact even years, has been reported quite widely. Labour are going to be hit hard by these boundary changes which we're now told uh, happening next month. Mm. And this is all going to be part of uh, David Cameron's continued legacy as the luckiest Prime Minister in the history of British politics, which he, a record he was proudly holding when he sort of lucked out in the Scottish referendum, when he saw Labour give Ed Miliband the leadership and then um, unbelievably give J Jeremy Corbyn the leadership. He was a very lucky man until, of course, he lost the Brexit vote. But this was going to be another example of this, because this is going to be very damaging to the Labour Party. It takes 35 seats, potentially, out of Labour at a time when the momentum is all with, as the word I use advisedly, is all with the Tory party, because Theresa May is going to have a vast majority when she has an election. And this basically means that it'll be easier for the Tories to increase their majority. Still, I mean, they're not just taking seats off Labour for no good reason. The right. reason is presumably that Labour have been overrepresented uh, right. in years Even previous. Even up the weight of each, each vote, which does seem like a fair thing to do, but it also will just be great for the Tory party. So, um, although Labour couldn't do much more damage to itself than it already has done, mm. so it doesn't really need the Tory party to inflict damage on it at this point. But the story was always that the Tory party had rural seats, so for a, a, big, a big constituency you'd have like two or three MPs, and then for, and, uh, for the Labour would have the urban centres where in a relatively small area you might have five or six or seven or eight MPs. So it was tilted in favour of Labour. It's one of the reasons Blair did so well was because also the boundary uh, uh, change at the time benefited Labour, but he still won because he was destroying a moribund government and had the momentum behind him. It's just another bit of bad news uh, for Labour, as a time as Hayden says, where they probably have enough bad news to contend with themselves. Uh, and a story, in fact, which the Times is picking up on, but was in the, uh, I think it was the Sunday Mirror today, uh, the, the Shadow Chancellor is calling for Sir Richard Branson to mm. be denighted, if, that, if that's the one. Yeah. I think you also laid into Lord Sainsbury as well. And Philip Green. And Philip Green. Well, that's, yeah. I mean, I think Alan Johnson has written a piece in The Guardian about not alienating the single biggest donor to your party, which would seem like a sort of prag pragmatic thing to do strategically. Uh, yeah, but he seems, he seems to have done it. It was a weird story. The whole thing was just very bizarre, wasn't it? Well, the whole train story. The whole train story. Yeah, that was a, it was a symptom of silly season, the train story, that it, that it sort of carried oh, but, but, but on. But what was it? I mean, we've been having quite a debate with viewers about this story. Ultimately, there were unreserved seats on that train. <laughs> People inferred from the video that, he, yeah. that Jeremy Corbyn put out that there were not unreserved seats on that train. Aren't people right for that to be looked at? Well, it's, right to be, no, look, it's right to be looked at. And indeed, but I mean, what it means is that Jeremy Corbyn is the same as every other politician. Is He likes doing misleading stunts that uh, will hopefully fit his own agenda. But that's what politicians do. And it's a story. My point is, it's a story. If it happens in August, it's a story that everyone splashes and everyone talks about. Mm. If it happens in October, October, then it's there, but it doesn't quite have the same amount of, of heft. What I find interesting about it is how entrenched people are in their political niches. You know, the, the Corbynistas, the supporters of Corbyn, read that story and it seems pretty bang to rights. You can see the seats, you can see they're empty. It does seem as if he's kind of bent the truth a little bit and done a political stunt, like you said. But you speak to people who are Corbyn supporters and they were like, no, 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 it's the establishment trying to de derail the uh, nationalisation of, 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 of the rail system. But it's the same with every uh, political party and every political yeah. um, sort of persuasion at this point, is you cannot convince somebody not to have their political, be their, their political persuasion. They are fully entrenched and they cannot be moved.